Hi, greetings everyone. I'm Randy Morton, your host of Sea Hunters. I hope you have been enjoying the shows that we've been doing so far. And today we are on location between Herbert's Beach and Longhall Beach to talk about sargassum. I know some of you may wonder, well, what is sargassum? Well, sargassum is that sea moss that has been reaching our shores since 2011, and it's been pretty much a nuisance. As you can see here, we have mountains upon mountains of seaweed on the beach here. And let's take a look at some of the sargassum that we have on the ground right now. This is what the organism look like. It's an algae that's free floating, which means that it doesn't have any roots, unlike other seaweeds. It's free floating throughout its entire life cycle. And uh, there's an area of the ocean called the Sargasso Sea, which is between North America and Europe. And that area is approximately two million square miles. In terms of size, so that we could get an idea in our heads as to what two million square miles is. You could take Japan as a country and put it into the Sargasso Sea and it would fit about 10 times. Now that is huge. Well, Sargassum, when it's in the Sargasso Sea, it provides a habitat for various species of marine organisms. It also provides shelter and food. But when it hits the shore or the near shore area, it becomes more of a nuisance. And when it is in that near shore area for a period of time, it begins to decay. Then it falls to the ground or falls to the ocean floor. And it becomes a bit toxic for the environment while it releases a compound called hydrogen sulfide. In 2018, the island of Barbados declared a national emergency in response to the quantities of sargassum which has hit their shores. Now this is just to show us how serious of an impact that this free-floating algae has had on islands throughout the Caribbean. Now, it has also affected the United States and Mexico. Many hotels have had to close and have had to invest heavily on equipment to remove the sargassum so that their guests can enjoy their lovely beaches. We here on the island of Nevis has been a bit more fortunate in that the sargassum would only impact on the, the south to northeastern coast of the island. And of course, you know, there are no hotels in those areas. However, we have multiple fish landing sites. So sargassum has been a serious problem for fishing and the fishing industry. And we'll be visiting a fish landing site shortly to take a look at some of the possible impacts of sargassum there. Here we are at Indian Castle, one of the fish landing sites which have seen the, the most impact from the influx of sargassum. Even earlier on this year, possibly in June, fishers were unable to fish for at least an entire week because of the amount of sargassum which was on the shore and in the near shore areas. And they've sought assistance from the Nevis Island government, which provided um, resources in the form of heavy equipment to have the sargassum shifted from the areas where they would normally launch their vessels to an area on the side, as you can see over there. Now, before I spoke to you about the Sargasso Sea, and research has shown that there is actually a small Sargasso Sea, which is where the sargassum that's affecting the Caribbean region is coming from. 
and this small Sargasso Sea is located off the coast of Brazil. And research has shown that the nutrients that are in the Amazon River is what that's probably feeding the sargassum in that area and causing it to have exponential growth. And as the ocean currents move from that area up through the Caribbean, it takes some of the sargassum with it, which is why we have been affected by it. So, I guess the question is, what are we going to do with the sargassum? Because clearly, it's here to stay. Many persons have already begun to use it in the agriculture sector. I believe there is a business in St. Lucia which converts sargassum into liquid fertilizer where agricultural producers could purchase and utilize on their farms to provide the people of St. Lucia with nutritious food. Here on the island of Nevis, um, there was an experiment in 2018 which aimed to utilize sargassum in multiple ways. And one of the main, um, the main methods was to use as compost. That experiment did not yield a significant difference between that compost and another compost, so other experiments would be ongoing in the near future. There has also been farmers here on the island who said that they've been using sargassum for years in their farm, unbeknownst to most people. But they said that it has had good results from it. And I'm sure we who have been purchasing the food have actually been enjoying the fruits of their labor as well. But as it relates to fishing, the question is, how can we find some major use for sargassum that it might have a lower impact on our fishers? I'm here at the Indian Castle Tidal Pool to give a little final word as it relates to sargassum. I would encourage the people of Nevis to become creative and innovative in our approach to utilize sargassum that we can all derive some serious financial, ecological, and social benefits. I'm your host. Randy Morton.